Right here we're going to look at the RL step input example from class. All right, and we have a uh, circuit that is not connected to anything, but we have a resistor and an inductor in series with each other. And at some time, which we're going to call time zero, we're going to flip this switch and connect the uh, voltage supply to the rest of the system. And what we want to do is determine uh, the current, how the current through the circuit changes as a function of time. Um, again, we'll, re we'll recall our water system analogy for this, and uh, remember that a resistor is a pipe restriction, or a uh, restriction of flow, uh, a, a narrower pipe, and the inductor acts like a paddle wheel. So we can kind of predict what the behavior of this system should be beforehand. So before the switch closes, or before we turn on our pump, um, we don't have any flow of water through the system. It's an open circuit, so there's no, uh, there's no current flow or we don't have any uh, reason for water to be moving through through our um, uh, fluid system. And then as soon as the switch closes, that's analogous to, uh, to, tur to turning this pump on and providing a pressure difference across these two elements, the resistor and the inductor in series. All right, The inductor acts like a paddle wheel. Right, so it's going to take some um, time before that paddle wheel starts rotating and allowing a sufficient current flow through it. But after it's operated for a long period of time, that paddle wheel is going to be spinning around and it's going to f have fully established um, its rotational inertia and allow unrestricted flow of current through it. In the same manner, we can use the property of the inductor to tell us that if it's been operated in the DC steady state for a long period of time, that it acts like a wire. All right. So the other thing to look at is uh, if we use our electrical system, we know that after a long period of time, after this 12 volt source has been connected, uh, it's going to act like a wire and we're going to reach a maximum of 12 amps of current flowing through this inductor. So we expect to see current start at zero and then approach some final steady state value, which will be tw the 12 volts divided by the 1 ohm resistance, which will give us uh, 12 amps of current. Okay. So in order to establish the differential equation model, this one actually is uh, one of the easier ones to do. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the circuit and uh, we're going to consider what happens when the switch is closed. So the circuit that we are interested in after time equals zero and after that switch closes looks like this. And we're interested in solving for the current that's generated due to the input voltage. All right, so to do that, uh, we're going to apply, um, since we're solving for current now, this is kind of a departure from what we've uh, looked at uh, a lot of times. Mo many times we're solving for voltage, but here we're going to solve for the current. And the general rule of thumb that I use is if you're solving for a current, you want to use the mesh current method. If you're solving for a voltage, you'll probably want to use the um, node voltage method. Um, that doesn't apply 100% of the time, but at least in this case, we can use that. So if we're going to solve for the current, I'm going to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law around this loop. Okay, and Kirchhoff's voltage law um, is going to tell us that the input voltage all of the uh, supplied energy has to be dissipated across the resistor and the inductor. All right. Based on that, now what I can do is I can um, put in my Ohm's Law relationship for my resistor. All right. So my resistor, the potential developed across the resistor is going to be the current times the resistance. The current volt the current to voltage relationship for an inductor tells me that the voltage developed across an inductor is equal to the inductance value times the rate of change of current through the inductor. Okay. So now uh, I can rearrange my equation slightly and what I'm going to wind up with to put it in standard uh, differential equation form will be L over R times the rate of change of current with respect to time plus the current is equal to the input voltage over R1. And since this equation is valid only after this switch closes, and we're going to consider that time arbitrarily to be time equals zero, this is going to be multiplied by the unit step function. So we have a first order differential equation with a step function input. 
All right, so it's a non-homogeneous equation. We're going to have to solve for both the free response, or the homogeneous solution, and the forced response, or the particular solution. Okay. Before we do that, we need to establish the initial condition. So the initial condition tells us what is the value of the current right after we close that switch, right after the switch closes. All right, so let's go back and look at how this system behaves. Before the switch closes, since there's no connection here, there's no current flowing through the system. So just before the switch closes, the current is equal to zero. Because of the properties of an inductor, what we know is that an inductor uh, will allow an instantaneous change in voltage across its terminals, but it will not allow an instantaneous change in current through it. So if the current at, in this scenario, right before we close the switch, was zero, that means right after we close the switch, the current flowing through it cannot change. So right after we close the switch, the current also has to be zero. All right, so that establishes our initial condition, the fact that at time zero, our current has to be equal to zero. So we have our first order differential equation and we have our initial condition. All right, to find the homogeneous solution, we're going to apply, um, we're going to use the, the lambda operator again. Um, by now, we should be familiar with the fact that uh, in all cases, um, what we're going to wind up with is L over R lambda plus 1 is equal to 0 because we're going to solve this equation as if the forcing function was 0 to come up with our homogeneous solution or free response. And that tells us that our eigenvalue is going to be negative R over L, which tells us our homogeneous solution for the current is going to be some unknown constant times E to the negative r over l times time. Okay, now for our particular solution. All right, our particular solution, we're going to assume uh, that the particular solution takes the form of the input forcing function, and here that's just a constant after time is equal to zero. Remember that this step function just means this equation is only valid, or this step input, this input value is only valid after time is equal to zero. After time is equal to zero, it's a constant, because we have a constant source. All right, so we're going to assume that the particular solution is a constant, and I'm going to call that constant B. To find the value of that constant, I put my particular, my assumed particular solution back into my original differential equation. And uh, when I do that, I will have L over R times the derivative of this particular solution, which is zero, so that term goes away. And I'll have B is equal to Vn over R1. So that tells me that the particular solution in this case is going to be equal to Vn, the constant voltage that's applied, divided by the resistance value. <clears throat> Therefore, the total solution for the current as a function of time is going to be our unknown constant, e to the negative r over l times time, plus vn over r1. To determine the value of this unknown constant, I'm going to apply my initial condition. So I'm going to apply my initial condition at time equals 0. At time equals 0, this term goes to 1, the e to the negative r over l goes to a value of 1, so I'm left with a plus vn over r is going to be equal to 0, because that's what my um, initial condition was. Right. With that in hand, now I can determine that a has to be equal to negative vn over r, giving me my total solution for the current uh, through this inductor and resistor as a function of time, right after I close the switch, uh, is going to be negative Vn over R, e to the negative R over L times time, plus Vn over R1. Okay, in this case we see that uh, when time is equal to zero, uh, because we, we um, applied this, we applied our initial conditions, this value should equal zero, and indeed it does. If time is equal to zero, these two terms cancel each other out identically. 
as time gets larger and larger, the importance of this term goes away, and we start, start to approach, in an exponential manner, this constant input value divided by uh, the resistor, which means we're going to have a current of the input voltage divided by the resistance value. As this circuit operates for a long time, so as T approaches infinity, all right, the circuit is going to start to look like a resistor in series with a wire because the inductor after a long period of time acts like a wire. So the current that flows through it after a long period of time is going to be defined by the input voltage and the value of that resistor. And this is what we see when we look at um, our, our step input example on the slides. We developed this same um, differential equation with initial condition uh, by applying Kirchhoff's voltage law around the loop. <coughs> and then we solved it, and we got the same result that's uh, presented here. And again, we see that the current is going to start at zero, and then it's going to slowly approach some uh, final steady state value, depending upon what the parameters of the circuit are.